What's going on, Crease fam? Welcome back. Welcome back. Welcome back. It is episode 14 of the Crease Podcast. It's your boy, Casita, back again with my boy, Trey. What's going on, Trey? What's going on, bro? We appreciate y'all sticking with us after taking a week off last week. We went and got a little bit of sun, you know, went and did some stuff, got the got some sports back, did that last weekend. But um, other than that, bro, taking lots of L's, but uh, the sneaker world's been fun lately, so no complaints. Uh, that's what's up, Doc. Yeah, uh, definitely needed that week off. You know, we've been grinding extra hard the last 13 weeks, so happy to be back week 14 for sure. Uh, with that, don't forget to go subscribe to our channel. <laughs> go hit the Instagram, the Twitter, go hit everything. We, I mean, there was still lots of views and stuff while we were off last week, so we really appreciate y'all following and sticking to it and everything. So, um, yeah, you want to kick it off with our uh, – our L meter this week. Man, I mean, I think a majority of the nation took an L on these when it came to any of the Grateful Deads and, you know, off wise. That was a that was a hell of a weekend, man. Uh, you know, Friday you enter the draw. See, man, I I never got my draw status back so quickly. They say your selection, you know, you know, your entry wasn't selected. The email came quicker than the than the sneakers app notification. So they had a plan. And yeah, then, I wasn't – I didn't have my hopes too high. I was – I wanted them really bad, right, like everybody else. But, I, obviously, I didn't have my hopes too high as we've seen these SB Dunks releases as the year as the year has gone on. Um, but even then, the next day. So, continued into the next day. Took another L. So, um, I, I mean, back to the Grateful Dead, though, first is, like, I, I took probably 25 raffle L's. On top of the sneakers, <laughs> didn't even hear back from any of the local shops as far as you didn't even win. So um, all that L combined was was enough to make me not even want to try the next day. But lo and behold, I woke up and tried again um, to another massive L for the off-white fours. Uh, they were super clean. I wanted those as well. I was trying in sizes 13 and up <laughs> everywhere. Um, just to try to get them in a 12, 11 and a half, something like that to fit me. But um, any chance you came up on those? <laughs> yeah, right. Uh, <laughs> they did release uh, on uh, the Off-White website. They released on the website at 3 a.m. our time. So I was up, man. I was. I just couldn't sleep that day. And I tried my luck, man. I even made an account for Off-White just – the dice did not roll in my favor, my man. And then, you know, congratulations to anybody who did get them. Go ahead, throw them my way real quick. That way, you know, we can do an unboxing video. You know, we we might give it back. Uh, <laughs> Just hash, take a picture of and hashtag crease pod on them, and I'll be happy enough. <laughs> Absolutely. Matter of fact, wipe off where it says air and then put in quotations crease pod. Yeah, that'd be dope. That'd be fire. Sure. Uh man, let's uh let's kick off the pod, man. Uh what we got first? We got KOTD. What you got? Okay, you want me to pull up my kick of the day? So I have the Jordan eleven win like ninety six. A little bit dirty over here. But um this is one of my favorite Jordan elevens. I wear these all the time. I'm a big Rockets fan, so um wear these. I mean it goes with shout out to Kobe as well. Got the Kobe Bryant jersey on with the NBA coming back this week, but yeah, this is one of my favorite Jordan 11 highs for sure. I have lots of lows as well. Um, I love this when you get the all red. Um, I am also a major Carmelo Anthony fan. He did have a, a PE that came out a few years prior to this. This came out in December 2017. I got this uh, as a gift that year for Christmas. Um, I'm really appreciative of these. Love the shoe. Um, but Melo's had a black inner lining right there, and this is all red. So his was all black, I believe, with red letters with the red 23 on the back. Um, but this is all red on this one. So yeah, the win like 96, Jim red, uh, Jordan 11. It's my kick of the day. Such a fire pair. Yeah, man. I love these. And even on top, I mean, everybody knows what you get with the 11s, but firebox, love the box. Yeah. For that's, me. that's the good box. So not mad at that at all. That is my kick of the day. Yeah. What do you have? Uh, Oh, I mean, before I get in mind, I mean, those in the 82s, like, those, that was kind of a slept-on, like, kind of pack of 11s. But, 
Man, I would I would have taken either pair, but I'm happy that you got those. So. Yeah, all the 11s, bro. All those 11s that were coming around then. I mean, the, the Legend Blue. I mean, all all of them. They they were all hits. Yeah, the Christmas songs. Is like. <laughs> bro, yeah, the 11s came hard. Uh, what do I got this? I'm gonna bust out a nice little 07 pair. You know, you know I gotta go retro. Yeah. You know, I got the. Hey. Burgundy fives, you know, we were talking about fives last week or last time we were on the pod, so uh, I had to bust out a classic uh, silver box challenge. So these are the Air Jordan 5 Burgundies uh, from 07. So this pair is a little old, a little crispy. Um, actually, 07, no, these are, no, these are 07. Yeah, okay, 07. Um, yeah, man, Burgundy hits, you know, that did get a little bit of yellowing over the years. Um, I bought this off of a friend of mine um, a while back, back in like 2014. So they were in still, they're still in pretty good p- condition, to be honest. Uh, the creasing is quite minimal, you know, considering it was an old ass shoe. Um, but I love this pair, man. I try my hardest not to wear because I've, I'm afraid they will fall apart on me. Um, but you know, soles are piss yellow. It's okay though. Uh, yeah, character. Man, this- That's character. Yeah, they're definitely a character pair of shoes. This is something that I hardly wear. I bust it out for special occasions. I think I wore this to a uh, you, sneaker. You did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was the same year you got your tuxedo 11s. Turned, I feel like. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, man, that's my kick of the day, Burgundy 5. So uh, I do love the pair. I do not want to see a restock on these. Uh, they need to just keep that one in the vault. You know, let me have a little bit of uh, nostalgic history with those. Completely agree. And yeah, it's definitely one we talked about that could have been on a, you know, something they were missing on the what the five for sure. That's that's the primo pair. Definitely at the top of my list. And yeah, as you mentioned, we went to that sneaker summit that day with those on. And I think you switched into them like halfway through. And people were literally trying to buy them off your feet as we went. And I was like, this is this is tight. So <laughs> you were killing it that day. Yeah, no, no doubt ain't nobody was gonna get those. I wasn't gonna walk around in socks, so <laughs> There. I'm not a big trader either. So, all right, man. Um, let's roll in into Fresh Out the Box. Yes, sir. Fresh Out the Box this week. We're going to start off with uh, a retro of a retro. It's coming right back out. We got the, uh, not even Air Jordans, the Nike Airship Band. Uh, they surfaced. Uh, they haven't even hit the sneakers app yet, but uh, we're looking at an all black colorway. Um, with uh, red accents, very similar to the Air Jordan ones. Uh, most notably, everybody knows that Michael Jordan was banned from wearing these shoes in the NBA. Um, there's a couple of photos I'll put up here of him actually wearing them in game. I think he was fined every game, and Nike paid the the the, the fine for that. So, a uh, nice little piece of nostalgic history to go along with a pair of shoes like that. They did also release a pair of Nike. Airships back in February, part of uh, what was that two pack? There was a two pack, it was a two pack during uh, the all star game, um, back in February, but anyway, yeah, this shoe's uh, gonna be coming out. Use that for a while, yeah, yeah, I know what you're talking about. Um, yeah, but yeah, we're talking these. This is 1984, he was getting fined every game in 1984 for these, bro. <laughs> Coming for the bread, man, I was like, oh boy. Oh, wow. So coming for the bird. Wow. Okay. <laughs> so for everybody also that thinks that the Jordan 1 band, you know, came from that, this is what it came from. This was the original. So this is what Mike was forking over cash for and stuff in 1984 was the airship. Um, so, yeah, it's a very cool, to, very interesting that we're getting this back. Like you said, it's nostal- as nostalgic as it gets for basketball shoes. Um, back door, a shop in Italy. Uh, I think they're planning on doing, they're having a, a big launch for it, the whole thing. Um, and that's going to include, they're talking to a few PE collectors that are going to go over um, the history of the shoe and everything like that. And a history of the Jordans on their website on the day it drops on, this is going to be August 7th. So the day after this episode airs. Um, so tomorrow, go check it out on the backdoor website. Uh, they're from, they're an Italian website. It's an Italian store. And uh, yeah, so they're they're dropping. They're going to do a global raffle. It says on their website. They don't have any other information on it right now. But uh, keep your eye out for that. Um, is this is this a shoe that you plan on attempting to purchase for your collection? 
No, nah, man, I'm all rifled out right now, dude. I'm, <laughs> I'm distraught. So, you know, uh, <laughs> it would be a nice, like, you know, centerpiece, something, you know, you put up on, you know, the mantle, um, something to just look at. But I'm not going to go way out of my way to get these. Uh, I will accept gifts uh, and money towards it. So if you want to donate either of those, I will be gladly to take that. Uh, yeah, I, I, they're, they're too high for me, to be honest. The, I look at the the back shots of them, and bro, that is a huge shoe, man. I would you cannot have ankle issues in those. This is not possible. <laughs> you can't you can't sprain your ankle in them. It's a whole brace up your leg. It looks like, but um, other than that, there's plenty of Jordan heads out there that are just Jordan for life, and they're gonna own this shoe no matter what. You know, it could look like whatever, and they're gonna own that shoe. <laughs> yeah, if I got 23 tatted on my back and it says Jordan, yeah, I I'd probably aim for these, but you know. I love the man. He did change the, the way that I watched basketball, but I'm not going out my way for these ones, man. Yep. All good on this one. <laughs> Definitely going to roll out of that one. Um, another thing that is now releasing stateside that will actually release uh, on a, I think it was an Asia, Asia exclusive release, Japan local release only. Uh, we're getting the uh, Sean Weatherspoons. Uh, the Sean Weatherspoon Gel Light 3s, they are set to release on uh, August 14th uh, via round two, his store round two. Uh, I believe he's doing the Hollywood store only. Um, yeah, yeah, man. Uh, this, you know, I think it was the beginning of last month, beginning of July, where, you know, they did the Asia release. Um, instant sell out. I think we were actually on here whenever they sold out. Um, yeah, I was, I was in a Zoom call uh, for my, one of my jobs and uh, 12 o'clock hit. That's what time they released. They released at midnight here. On 12.01, they were gone. So that will be cool to see them happen. Uh, they had a big, like, showing or some kind of, like, uh, art gallery or something for the whole release. Um, they had, like, a whole collection or something, right? We talked about it on the episode. Well, yeah, yeah, because, you know, it's, a, it's still a collab with Atmos. So, you know, you know when, whenever you do a collab with Atmos. Because <laughs> we, we went back and forth. They had him in, like, Shanghai and uh, Tokyo or something like that. They had a couple of different uh, art galleries, but they had them exclusively at the Tokyo, I think, right? Mm -hmm. That's correct. Right. So. Yeah, man. Um, Fire shoe, and I figured we'd get it eventually. Uh, we kind of detailed this whole thing. It's got, you know, it's got the crazy colors throughout. You get 100 different swoosh com uh, Asics logo combinations. Um, so it's a cool shoe, but... Nothing I'm going to fret over if I don't get it, to be honest, on this one. Same. Um, I think the buzz for it has now died. Um, you That's know. a good point. Really good yeah. point, actually. Yeah, I think the buzz for it has now died. Uh, you know, people are looking forward to his uh, Adidas release now more, which I think is going to be a buzz still anyway. But, um, again, I'm taking donations. So, you know, go ahead and throw those my way if you, if you got them. Um, would you take one of the kith pairs any any one of the three kith pairs over this oh yeah without yeah, a heartbeat yeah send me those 252.1s up i'd eat those up um but yeah i mean yeah when it comes to the gel light threes i don't think anybody's gonna touch ronnie you know but you know it was a good attempt uh these are still a fire pair of shoes but i'm not i'm not about to lose sleep over these I feel it. I feel it. Yeah. But they're not ugly. Dropping? Uh, August 14th. August, August 14th, 14th at Round 2 Hollywood. So this is be next week. A little, yeah. Next week at Round 2 Hollywood. All right. Mm -hmm. I'll be ready. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. We'll see you there. First flight out to Hollywood. I'll be lining up outside. I'm pretty sure people are camping right now. So. Right now, <laughs> they're real. They're real. <laughs> People have camped out longer for, you know, for pigeons, you know. So I was like, I, I wouldn't be surprised if people are camped out right now. <laughs> you definitely do not look like pigeons. Uh, some that looks like that came out of a pigeon are these Union LA Jordan 4s. Uh, uh, come on, bro. Like, um, the, what they, you write? What you write? Come on, man. These they didn't try with. They didn't come as hard with these as they came with the ones. 
Not at all, bro. Not even close. Not even close. And you know what's crazy? I see a lot of people saying they're growing on them and like they're starting to like them. I'm like, bro, don't lie to yourself, bro. Like, just back up just a little bit. Yeah, we are referring to the Union Los Angeles Air Jordan 4 collab. We're getting two different colorways. Uh, the primarily black pair and then a primary guava ice, which is like a light pink pair. Both have red and blue um, different parts on the back of them. Um, different panels and stuff towards the back. To be honest, that yeah, like Cita said, these are not hot. <laughs> they suck. Um, I think the worst part for me, and we talked about this earlier, and it might be because you and I are just such Jordan 4 aficionados, and we love this shit, and we actually love the Jordan 4, like, a lot. And they put this mesh toe box on it, bro, and it makes it, you know, like, I settle on the Air Max sometimes with the mesh toe box because it, it's, it's not terrible, but on this, it looks so bad. It looks so terrible. It looks cheap. Um, I don't even know. It, it, I almost, if I had to pick a pair, I almost want to go with the pink pair just because they both suck so much. And if I'm just going to go crazy on it, I might as well just wear this full on pink pair, bro. So, um, the black pair looks, it, it looks, I don't know. It looks a little too fake for me. I don't know. Yeah. They do look like they came out of flea markets. Um, but I will say that I would probably take the black pair over the guava ice pair. Uh, the blue ankle collar, you know, it's kind of reminiscent of that of the Union One. Uh, I will take, I will say that. Um, but that mesh toe box, it, it's got to go. That, you know, the inverted tongue, I think, is an ode to the 90s whenever the shoe did come out. Oh, it was the 90s or 89. It was around that time uh, where people were actually flipping the tongue inside out. So, so a red Air Jordan in the front, if you've ever had a pair of fours, sure, I know you have plenty. Uh, if you've ever owned a pair of fours, you know that the word Air Jordan inside the tongue is actually upside down. So whenever you flip down the tongue, it reads Air Jordan facing out to those who can see your shoe. So I think that's what the ode is for that. But like, you like the, the way the tongue is? Yeah. Uh, which pair of fours do I got handy here? Like a pair of bread fours, you know. If I was to flip out this tongue like this, it would read right. Air Jordan. Yeah, so that's where I think they got the inspiration for that. And this is where how most people used to wear their Jordan fours, which is totally disrespectful. Um, okay, that's what I was asking. <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, that, that just does not fit with today's style. Um, I was in the 90s. I was born in it. I was raised a little bit in it. But I'm not doing that to my shoes at all. Um, these are going for two fifty a pair on August 29th via the Union website. If it's anything like the last release, the Union website will get bricked, probably botted, and good luck. 100% of pairs actually sold on there will be on StockX within a day or two. <laughs> hey, within minutes. Within minutes. People do this for real. Yes. Yeah, so let's talk about something we want to get to, though. So we got some more dunks coming out. Year of the dunk, 2020. You know what it is. So That's if anything coming in 2020, at least we're getting some more dunks, right? So uh, the dunk S, uh, dunk low SP, uh, we're going to get – so we got the plum dunk end of last year. End of last year, right? I believe it was end of last year. And uh, so now we're going to get the rest of the ugly duckling pack. Um, we get the ceramic dunk low as well as the veneer dunk low. Um, we posted these on our Instagram. You probably checked these out over the past couple of days. Um, the ceramic dunk low comes in a black and orange hue with a green swoosh as well as green laces, whereas the veneer pair is wild. It is more of a green and brown upper with the purple swoosh, laces, and uh, outsole on it. So it's got a lot going on. It's got a, a yellow inner lining, which is kind of where I think it goes you know, but uh, other than that, these are both uh, these are both pretty cool dunks, and uh, I am happy to get the dunk back some more, so I can keep taking L's on these dunks. Hell it's, yeah. all, it's all good at one hundred and ten dollars. I'm not mad at them. So, uh, which one of these are you picking, dog? If you give one of them. Oh man, give me a pair of plums, dog. I, I want the plums still. Um, out of the three, out of the three, uh, since the plums weren't SBs. Um, 
if I wanted the SBs, I, I think I'm gonna go ceramic. Yeah, I think the ceramics are the ones to take. You know, you can never go wrong with black panels. Black panels really just set it off. It, it's just, it's just, it is what it is, man. People like black panels. That's that's what it is. So uh, black panels, orange overlays. I'm taking that in a heartbeat. Um, and he's it and like he's, it looks like it looks like a Halloween shoot to me. The other ones are kind of like, kind of Hulkish, kind of Hulkish, and it's just. It's definitely third on the list for me if I'm rating all three of them. Yeah, those are definitely a pair you cop to swap. Like, uh, you know, somebody else has the other two, and, you know, they have a pair of DS, whatever else dunks came out this year. I'll even take Laser Orange uh, SBs in in exchange for them. Um, that, that's how much I don't like those veneers. But I, I don't see anything could particularly wrong. I actually like the yellow uh inner liner it, it kind of sets it off you know it it helps bring or accentuate all the other colors with it so gotcha. yeah it's just a little tape. <laughs> yeah no they're, they're cool i'm and like i'm cool with them coming out with as many dunk packs as possible these are expected to come out late 2020 um just like the plums probably see them fall more than likely one fall one winter or something like that or we might get a back-to-back -back drop like we did for the uh the college dunk packs that we just got recently um but yeah, expect 110 on those. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so we can move into uh, another one of our guys here. So Mr. Eric Emanuel with the Reebok. It went, uh, so as y'all know, he came out with the question mid recently. Uh, we talked about it on the most recent episode, episode 13. Um, it was pink with translucent blue outsole. It was a very clean summer shoe. Now we got two more. Now we got the Club C. He's going to work on a different model. Um, have you seen these? Interested in these? Yeah. Um, again, Club C is not my particularly favorite Reebok model, um, but I think he did a really good job with these in particular. Um, whenever you can change the sock line or make it a little bit more fun to wear, you know, with the red shag or the purple shag, I think uh, it helps bring it out a little bit. He does have his branding on the heel, so, you know, does take away. Brings a, a little bit more of a flair to it, you know. Um, but at the end of the day, you know, it's still a club C. I'll probably take Reebok Classics over it. Um, but no, uh, these are really great. Uh, I, I definitely look forward to it. Eric Emanuel's having a great come up right now. Uh, his shorts that are going for the same price as a pair of dunks are still selling out left and right. Dunks, um, bro. His shorts are going for more than dunks. He's the king of shorts right now. My God. I I never seen a day where somebody – can infiltrate the shorts market and you know still kill it the way he's killing I'm it. Right I'm not gonna hate on him, bro, but I'm pretty sure we had those same shorts at Garcia Middle School without the EE logo on them. <laughs> those are just like mesh shorts, bro, and it kills me that they're $116. But with that being said, if you go look at his Instagram page and you see some of these designs he's putting out, bro. There's nobody touching some of this stuff he's putting out on the shorts, so uh, definitely big props to him. I think I think they're super fire. 116 is a hell of a price tag, but um, get them get them while you can at 116 because if you go look at the secondary markets, uh, you're gonna wish you did pull the trigger when they dropped. Mm -hmm. uh, as far as these two club C's, uh, just to kind of go over them. One is a primarily white with a black uh, outsole, and it's got the red shag on the inside, and that's pretty much the entire shoe. It's primarily just white with the EE logo on the back. The other one's also primarily white, but go Tigers, you get a little uh, purple and gold action here. These are the asphalt golds on the second pair. You get the purple shag on the inside of the inner lining on these with the gold outsole on the bottom. These are asking for your, uh, you know, your throwback Joe Burrow jersey, something, something crazy. So um, these are definitely both pretty cool. These will also be coming out tomorrow, August 7th. Ooh. So keep an eye out for those. EricManual.com, Reebok.com, check all that out. We will be getting those shortly. <laughs> shortly, pun intended. Um, yeah, man. So that is uh, that's fresh out the box, man. Uh, really, really, really like this fresh out the box. Uh, mm -hmm. Let's roll on into order confirmed. Um, definitely a very quiet past week. Uh, you know, I think we were saying it off cam that you know was JB and Nike just killing the hearts of many, you know, time and time again, you know, it's 
I was trying to look at some different brands and some different artists and collaborators, see what else was going on in the streets. So, uh, for not, oh, excuse me, correct me if I'm wrong, uh, but it's either JJJ Down or JJ Down, JJ Down, New Balance 992s. They definitely hit the airwaves right after i think eric emmanuel's uh the uh the rebox came out all on the same day the the questions um these released for 250 dollars uh via their website uh this colorway was the green one uh, a couple of weeks ago say it again new balance right the 992 yeah the 992s yeah um and this is their second pair uh they had released a brown pair a couple weeks prior to that uh, that also just took everything by storm. The resale on them is absolutely ridiculous. They're going for well over nine hundred dollars now. Oh man, it's a it's a reseller's dream to you know come up seven hundred dollars on a pair of shoes that you, you know you have no interest in. Um, but honestly, I do enjoy these. I, I'm trying to get more into different brands after Nike keeps breaking my heart kind of hard to rep a brand whenever you can't get their shoes so you know you try to look for the next best option um out of comfort but i do love these shoes uh, i try to get the the kiff 992s uh, and of course those sold out too so um yeah, yeah. I, I, I like the green pair a lot the green pair looks a lot better than the other pair um you would hate me because i would not lace them up i would i would attempt to make them look cool because they do not look cool at all um i i'm big hating on these these are i am not a fan of these uh i would love to like this is something my grandfather would wear um so shout out to him but <laughs> not, for two, <laughs> not for 250 bucks bro that just that's that's a wild and like you said the fact that they're reselling for 900 just goes to show where the game's at today um that's absolutely asinine um but this guy uh Jound or however you pronounce it. Uh, this is a guy from Montreal. I read up about him that he did like mood boards and stuff and he was posting pictures online to get started. His name's Justin Saunders. Um, way back in the day, he was doing mood boards and stuff and it turned into, he started doing collabs um, and then Virgil, Virgil shouted him out when he started doing some stuff. So he's done a bunch of different collabs on different things. I think he did some other shoes and stuff like that. Um, yeah, he has a Vans, he has a Reebok. So this guy has been around for a little while. This is not, nothing brand new. And uh, these these resale prices go to show you exactly what it is. <laughs> yeah, man. It's, uh, you got to ride the wave, bro. That's that's where it is. And once you get the the Virgil blessing, uh, you know, you can go ahead and just uh, keep it too Virgil. Look soft. That look soft. I'll give them that, bro. They look, they look like they're a quality shoe. They're New Balance, so I know they're a quality shoe. They're going to be around forever, but um, – not the prettiest, that's for sure. And it looked like something Brad Hall would wear, so you know. And I can't, you know, I can't wait for him to get his hands on a pair of those, and I'm gonna watch him do his review on those with his uh, bell bottom pants. Uh, down, <laughs> shut it down. Yeah, let's let's roll into. Uh, uh, New York. What, what's up, Greenville? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Fayetteville. Yeah. Well, uh, we're going to roll into the New York Knicks next draft pick. Uh, J. Cole. Uh, as we know, J. Cole's inked the deal with Puma. Uh, it's not new nowadays to see uh, musicians ink deals with sneaker sneaker brands. Uh, J. Cole did his with uh, Puma and he just released his first basketball shoe. It's called the RS Dreamer. Uh, came with a black upper. Um, made out of a uh, mesh knit material and uh, uh he has a multicolor uh midsole and a uh multicolor outsole as well uh the shoe dropped uh this past week what what day did it drop uh it dropped over the weekend i don't remember exactly what day i do know when i went to go check it out though within a few minutes of it being dropped it was completely gone already um there was there was a solid amount of hype that built up around this shoe especially the last week or so um, if they're going, if I'm not mistaken, I think Kuzma's already rocked it in game and stuff like that. So, um, yeah. shout out to J. Cole, man. That's a that's a huge, huge deal to not only get your own shoe, 
but then to say, oh, I'm not going to do a casual shoe. <laughs> I'm going to do a hooper shoe <laughs> and I'm a rapper. So, like, I mean, that says something alone, bro. Like that, that alone. And, and obviously this is the RS Dreamer. We've talked about this shoe before. They have an RSX. So this, they kind of mesh some of those uh, RS features from it and put the basketball sole on it and stuff like that. And it, it looks, it looks like a great basketball shoe. It looks like you're tight, snug in that thing. Um a guard shoe, um, but it's it's very it's very dope to me. I think it's it's the best thing Puma got going basketball shoe wise. I like I'm not a hater on the Clyde to be honest with you, but this this is a real basketball shoe that you're like when you look at it from far away, you're not like oh that's a that's a Puma, like that looks like a Puma from 1980, right? So no, nah, this is this is like a brand new. He, to me, he hit this out the park. I think he did a really good job, and I'm honestly looking forward to seeing it in some other colorways. Yeah, this is not no uh, Lening or this ain't no, uh, you know, no answer. You know, this is a this is an, a basketball shoe from Puma, you know, right. and it was a great price point at one hundred and twenty five bucks. You know, I had great backing behind it with an artist like J. Cole, who also released a two pack uh, of music over the past week as well, you know both were hits you know that that lion king on ice that was absolute fire but the way that climb came on when the, when the climb first when we press play on that joint yeah 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 exactly scary season you just want to hide your face i was, like, I was uh, like 10 seconds in i was like running back yeah <laughs> he, he hadn't even said nothing yet just run it back i just want to hear it again oh man yeah that, that it was on repeat all weekend then uh he dropped a commercial uh him and Master P, they dropped a commercial featuring the shoes. So, you know, it was it was a great look. It was a great look for Puma, great look for J. Cole. Um, happy for all his success. Uh, go to his oh, man. I hope he gets a deal in the league. I know he's already a millionaire. I know he's already got the money, but it's clearly his dream, dreamer, to be in the league. And, uh, I mean, I'm pretty sure he could play on the Hornets right now. So, he just needs to call up MJ. Be like, hey, bro. What's MJ, up? MJ ain't gonna take him with them Pumas on. Pumas on? <laughs> I think Terry Rozier's Puma, if I'm not mistaken. But uh, yeah, for sure, for sure. <laughs> hell no. Nah. You think? No, nah, hell no. Nah. There ain't no way. <laughs> ain't no way. Um, I, the Knicks. I pray to God he plays for the Knicks. He'd be the first person to play a game and then host the show in that mug. <laughs> oh yeah, he'll do the halftime show. And lace up for the third quarter as well. So I'm looking forward to that. That'd be fire. Um, fire. Let's keep it rolling. We got uh, the Nike uh, Air Zoom Freak Twos that just dropped. This is the second shoe uh, under the Greek Freak Giannis Antikut. Man, y'all know. Giannis <laughs> Antikut. Oh, yeah, yes, that's sir. Fun. Bow, Mr. Bow. Oh. The league's M, uh, reigning MVP. Um, yeah. Reigning just, L's the, reigning L taker to the Houston Rockets, but it's all good. We can keep we can keep moving on. All day, all day. Yeah, he just released the Niger colorway. It's an ode to his Nigerian roots. Uh, the shoe itself is a nice. Uh, I don't even want to consider it like a takedown model, but it, it, it's man, it looks like a point guard shoe, but he is definitely far from that. Uh, the shoe is 130 bucks. Believe it or not, they're still available online. His shoes don't sell out. His shoes actually go on sale, which is crazy. Um, but it's a nice, uh, it's a nice uh, white midsole, black outsole, black outsole. Yeah, black outsole, and it has uh, almost like traditional uh, Nigerian patterns on the front, on the top of it. So nice big swoosh that goes around all the way back to the heel. And uh, it has like a the, the lacing system allows you to like lock down the shoe really well. Uh, the back panel has his number on there, and uh, on the sole it has each one of his family members' names on it. So it's a really nice touch to it. Um, I think like the shoe is really nice. I like the logo they got on the heel, a little a. Uh, I guess that's whether it's going to be his logo or the family logo, whatever that is. But I like oh, the little G A. It's a G A. GA, oh, for Giannis. Gotcha, yeah. gotcha, gotcha. You know, yeah. It's a cool little logo. It kind of reminded me of, the, like, the recycling symbol, to be honest, off the bat. But uh, I'm going to be honest, this colorway is so fire. It is 
killer. Um, the the tongue, I love the tongue. Um, that that's definitely a super dope uh, little pattern they got going there. I remember they came out with some Nigeria. I want to say they were World Cup jerseys a few years ago, and they were so fire. And these kind of go along that same pattern of of Nike really knocking that out of the park. So uh, great job to him. I actually watched something recently um, on his upbringing in Greece and how hard it was for him and his family in Greece and stuff like that. So um, it's cool to see him embracing all his sides and all that. So um, this is super fire. And like you said, man, I, I, this is this is sitting right now in every size on Nike.com right now, um, which is crazy for a pretty qual for a very quality basketball shoe. Um, but to that point, like, I think a lot of the Nike basketball shoes are doing that as well. So you can, you can go find some Paul Georges. You can go find some Kyrie's on sale right now as well. So I think that's just the state of Nike basketball shoes right now. Absolutely. Uh, they don't hit the same as, you know, they did back in the day, you know, up tempos and uh, Air Max, or temp, you know, that whole line, that whole lineage uh, just doesn't ring the same bells. Uh, but this is a great shoe. Uh, congratulations to, you know, the boy Giannis. Uh, that's, a, that's a big feat to come over. Um, uh, just a little side note, they are releasing Air Prestos with the same Nigerian print on there as well. So be on the lookout for those. Those have surfaced. So uh, uh, we'll be on the lookout for those for sure. And that's going to wrap up uh, order confirmed. Uh, we're going to roll right into tracking order. Um. Yeah, we can knock this out real quick. I know uh, we got some talked about in the past couple of weeks. Uh, so I mean, we don't have to go over them again. Tokyo Air Jordan ones, um, coming out tomorrow, August seventh. Everybody's ready. If you're not ready, then go to your app right now and get ready, um, because those are coming. As well as the Reebok Question Mid OG versus OG. We talked about these a few episodes ago. Uh, we'll link both of these up top so you can go check these out. Uh, within different episodes as far as the shoe goes. OG versus OG is the James Harden, Allen Iverson mix on the question mid. So those are both super dope. Uh, and they will both be coming out tomorrow, August 7th. So definitely check those out. Um, other than that, I think the first one we're going to talk about on this week's tracking order uh, will be the air. We have a bunch of Jordans this week, a bunch of Jordans. But uh, we did take off last week, so we'll kind of get them all out right now. The Air Jordan 1 Satin Snake. Um, you get your red, black, and white colorway. It's very I think it's pretty cool I think it's a pretty cool shoe um, I'm not a huge set I'm not a huge snake fan other than like small portions of the shoe um, but what do you think of this one this rendition uh, it's a nice one it's a nice one for the ladies it is a woman's release only so um, yeah you know for the ladies you know they like snake skin stuff you know purses you know, all the other accessories to go along with it um, so you know. Whereas, like, had the off-white four come out, and you, had, you know, you had a lot of guys um, want to get it in their size. Do you feel like, like you'll we'll have the same situation here? Uh, no, I think this one's going to stop at a men's ten and a half, where you know that's where most uh, women's shoes end. Uh, ten and a half, I believe, is what a men a woman's twelve. So uh, that's yeah. yeah, that's that's where it would end. Uh, and I'm not shocked by it whatsoever i think it's a uh, it's a great way to stop the shoe i think it's a very lady oriented shoe as well um if guys can get their feet on it go off king all power to you um but these are set to release august 6th at 170 dollars, which is i guess the new air jordan one price those things done came up all the way from 120 to 170 now so and only rising and only rising, only going up. That's right. Um, next up, we got the Jordan 6 K54s. This pair is going to be the purple and cream pair. Um, they're set to release August 8th uh, on the sneakers app for $200. Um, what are your takes on these? I know you're a big K54 fan, <laughs> but I don't think on these. <laughs> so, yeah, you all saw how bad I bashed the, the brown, the Baroque brown pair. Um, it was just horrendous, bro. But uh, th these are a little bit better. Uh, we talked about these being these being at least that much smidgen better. Uh, I like the purple on them. The design is still the design, right? So it's it's still they meshed in the the K fifty four logo 
and made a whole theme out of it on the upper. So it's a very interesting one. It's a lot better than the other pair, to be honest with you. But I did see they're also releasing uh, children's sizes of the brown pair same day as they're releasing these on Sneakers app. So if your child missed out on them, then you can go back for the brown pair. But uh, more than likely, you'll just want this cream and purple pair, which is super dope. 200 on Sneakers app. I'll probably try for them, to be honest. I mean, I would. I feel like I would regret it if I did not try for them. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um... With the one low, though, I wish they did the one low as well. That's, that's the only one I'm looking forward to is the one yeah, low. Cream and purple low one, probably. Yeah, that's 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 the only one I want. And you can do whatever y'all's original plan was with that one. You know, if you're gonna incorporate the uh, the K54 uh, mm-hmm. pattern all over it, more power to you, JB. Just go off and do it. Uh, <laughs> just go off. <laughs> just go off and do it. Um, what we got up next? Next we got up the uh, <laughs> oh gosh, uh, the Air Jordan Five Ghost Green, uh, also known as the Bel Air Alternate. Engelmans. Uh, huh? Tanglements. 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 What? <laughs> Alternative, right? Yeah, these are the alternate Bel Airs. Yeah, so it's got like it's much. It's a white now, huh? It, is it like a? It's like a light gray. Uh no, the original pair was a light gray, or was it a dark gray? Yeah, this, dark pair, gray. this pair is white. It's like an upper. The upper is white. Yeah, it's white. It has purple accents, green as well. Um, and then the twenty three on the back is uh, green with purple shading on the back, black tongue, and the same uh, sock liner that we've all known to love that came with the Bel Airs. Uh, set to release tentatively here for august 8th for 190 bucks uh you you grabbing these trey uh no i'm not grabbing these i do think i don't think they're bad i think i've seen some people bash them because they like the original bel air so much but uh i don't like that they're calling them the ghost green (laughs) i don't like that at all um but i don't think it's a bad shoe um I haven't been into fives that much to be completely honest with you. I haven't been like wanting to purchase fives other than those organs that are coming out, the fake organs that are coming out. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I don't like that they're calling these ghost green. Uh, I know, you know, we got a, we got a homie that's been itching for these for years and years. He wanted the original pair. So he's, he's going to get these this year. So I'm happy for him. Other than that, I, I don't have any major feelings towards these. I wish they were maybe Gray, darker gray. I don't really like the total white on the upper, but is what it is. Not terrible. Yeah, not not terrible, but not coming home either. So, um, yeah, man, they can do so much better with these fives. I mean, I also saw the pair of uh, golf pair of fives, the Peace and Loves, uh, with the oh. tie guys. Those would have been better as you know an actual in Jordan Five rather than the golf edition, but. You know, it is what it is. Can't can't fight it off. So uh again, uh August ninth, tentatively August ninth for one ninety. Um uh moving on, we got Sneakers Day is coming up. Uh Sneakers Day is gonna be the anniversary date of when the sneakers app had launched. I believe this one is for a European release only. That's what it says so far. Um, but it, this is the Gotham Air Max Ones. It's going to be a two-pack pair, uh, one pair with uh, brown and brown hues. I'm talking about all the browns, terracotta, sepia, you know, all the good ones. Um, and then followed up with a a clear pair, an all-white pair with um, some clear accents to go along with that one as well. Um, nice engraving on the heel as well. And then the insoles will have on the brown pair, it's going to say sneakers. Um, and then on the clear pair, it should say got them. So um, no price point set on these either. Um, but most Air Max ones usually go for around 150 160 bucks. Um, something that you want to add to the collection, Trey? Um, I don't like the, the, the translucent clear pair. Uh, that one's not for me. The brown pair is not bad. Um, I feel like you could like dress it up for the fall and stuff like that but um it's like it looks like it's some really good premium leather throughout the entire shoe so even the swoosh is a different color brown than the rest of the shoe and it's like 
the leather on that you can tell is immaculate. So um, the quality of the shoe looks great. The clear true, the clear shoe doesn't look like really bad, but it gives me vibes of like old Air Forces where you can see your socks through them and stuff, and I just don't like them at all. Um, what? <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to remember those forces. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like the the whole toe box is just like you get that like oh, it almost looks like it's translucent if you look over the top of it, but um, it, it's cool looking. It's very futuristic looking, if anything. But um, to me calling them the Gotham pack and all that is just like a complete troll job. So um, really appreciate y'all Nike and we'll extra not get them since they're probably not going to be in the States anyways. <laughs> I'm ready to take the L's to the bots anyway. So it doesn't really matter. Like, but like you said, the Brown pair, I will take the Brown pair over the clear pair. I think they make a great transition. And I do agree with you. The leather does look magnificent on them. Um, kind of reminds me of the the London Amsterdam pack that dropped last year. Um, yeah. That brown on there looks really really good. So um, I'm still hard. I'm still hurting very bad from that pack from missing out on that pack. I mean, we should have went and then just got caught up and then stayed there during all the quarantine. But y'all would never see me again. The show would be live from Amsterdam. Oh man. <laughs> That'd be a different day. I I, I I would live to do like a a, a podcast overseas. That would that'd be fire. Um, oh, just but, wait, just wait. <laughs> okay, coming soon, coming soon. But uh, stay tuned for more details about the upcoming releases on those. Uh, again, August eighth is the tentative day for the Gotham Air Max One Pack. Um, sure we're you gonna stay tuned to our channels and stuff. We'll keep updating y'all with the with all TBD release dates and stuff that switches around and stuff. We post all of it, Instagram, Instagram story, Twitter, Facebook, go follow us everywhere. So you don't miss anything. We stay in there. We stay in the cut. Um, so speaking of cuts, uh, we are going to head right into sitting on the shelf. Uh, a lot of cut and sewing going into uh, these new kicks nowadays. Uh, so the topic at hand right now is uh, there's a lot of custom kicks that go on. A lot of people put their own rendition or iteration on, um, you know, some of the classic silhouettes. Uh, you know, we we recently we've been seeing uh, some dunks. Uh, a lot of people try to do their own bespoke version of these shoes. So um, just to mention some of them is uh, the Warren Lodo dunks. Uh, what he does is take the Jason Voorhees mask and he puts it on the swoosh. Um, he just released a pair on August 1st. So... Um, Though they were set to drop, I don't know if they actually dropped or not. But uh, those are that's one particular pair. There's another pair called uh, One in the Chamber Air Jordan Ones, uh, where you know they take the Wings logo and uh, they actually uh, they put uh, the chamber like a chamber of like a revolver in there. And you can actually see the uh, the bullets in there as well. And they actually changed the swoosh, I believe, to a bullet too. Um, then, of course, this is probably one of the ones that have been getting the biggest buzz and the biggest resale. Uh, it is called, now, don't quote me, but this is exactly what it's called. It's called Fuck the Fuck Off Air Jordan 1s, uh, where they take the swoosh and they make it a middle finger. Uh, they have other accents as well that note that it is that of explicit language. Uh, and followed up lastly by probably one of my favorite ones because he is a fellow Houstonian. Um, uh, he goes by Young Pony Boy on Instagram, but uh, these are called the Deaf Dream Air Jordan Ones. Uh, it's an all yellow upper um, with flaming swooshes, uh, double stacked flaming swooshes um, on there as well. Um, now, you know, the, the, these are like, not these shoes in particular, but all these shoes, all these custom kicks have been gaining popularity. Um, people think of them more as a visionary design. Um, you know, it's not a typical, you know, Air Jordan 1. You know, people are now looking at it more as a, uh, I guess, a collaborative method. But really, you know, they, they never got the nod from Nike or Jordan, so to say. Um, and the resale on some of these are actually going quite crazy. So uh, just for instance, you know, I'm just going to say the, the FTFOs, 
those ones are resold for six hundred and fifty dollars uh via resale platforms so um what do you think about custom kicks in this day and age uh is it something that's more obtainable because most of the time when these people order these shoes that's exactly what they do they it's on pre-order so the shoes are made specifically for you versus trying to race everybody now so, sometimes they do a limited stock like the warren lotos 3000 pairs were made and only 200 and they were sold for 200 dollars a piece so do you think it's better like as a pre-order type of thing whenever you can you know purchase a pair of shoes and then wait a couple months and then the shoes come in and then you'll have a custom kick or you know is it something where you know it's just like a, a novelty right 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 i think the main thing for me like in and warren lotus is killing it for sure he's besides for the shoes he's got the vintage tees right now that i don't think anybody's messing with i know we talked about eric being top of the top on shorts as far as vintage tees goes tees go uh warren lotus has been top of the top as far as that um but these jason Voorhees dunks are are insane uh, i think they're i think they're cool i think they're pretty cool um are they fugazi kind of I mean, they're not real, that's for sure. Like you said, they didn't get any clearance by Nike or anything. Um, but to your question, I the one thing about them being so limited, right, is that I think with Nike, when you do order like we do on the sneakers app and we're all like sitting there praying to God that we hit and then we get quality control issues, right? And then then you get, you know, a bunch of messed up stuff sometimes. And uh, with these, I would hope that they're so limited and – um, they're so different and unique that they put time into them and actually do them like perfectly and stuff like that. So I would think as you're buying a shoe from a customizer and they're going to do the whole thing to make the entire shoe look perfect, there's not going to be any glue marks, scratches or anything like that in the shoe. I do think that um, you expect that when you buy a custom shoe like this. Um, uh, I like the Warren Lotuses the most out of all the ones you named. Some of the Jordans are just <laughs> – some of the Jordans are just too much for me, bro. The chamber on those ones is just like, oh, my gosh, what are y'all doing, bro? But um, I think my other issue is that there's a fine line, right, between inspiration and jockeying. I've said that before, right? There's, like, a very fine line in between. And I wish he just used different colorways, right? Like, we get, like, the Heineken colorway on this shoe, and it's just like – golly bro but like how far off does that differ from Virgil literally taking a Jordan one and throwing some shit on it right like is it is the only difference that he got clearance from Nike right <laughs> yeah like it comes in the box you know you, you get the actual Air Jordan box you know I, I would feel safe saying that I've seen some of the boxes these customs come in and they're more fire than a regular ass box like get from Nike <laughs> It's true. I mean, I think the only major issue with some of these customs as well is uh, you can't return them. You know, there's uh, if the market's not there for them, you know, there's, there's no uh, outlet that you can drop them off at and get your money back for them, at least for retail. Um, so, you know, it it's it's a big it's a big risk, you know, trying to buy some of these customs and you know thinking that you know you know you stand out like it's cool to stand out it's cool to be different and you know i think that's what our culture now embraces um but all in all you know the, i think the risk is higher than the reward at, at, at given times because you know if this person tanks you know if, if the brand tanks you know at, at, as a collector as a sneaker head or somebody who collects shoes you know, if you ever wanted to get rid of the shoe, you know, where's your market for it? You know, if there, what if this person is just having a good run, you know? I hear that. I hear that. I think if you're buying the shoe, if you're buying a fake dunk low with the intent to sell it for profit, then I have no sympathy for you when you can't sell it for profit. That I, there's no reason for me to have sympathy for you. If you already know what it is, you already know there's no Nike stamp on this on the shoe. So, I mean, do I feel bad for you not being able to flip this for a thousand dollars? 
Absolutely not. Um, so yes, what you're saying as far as the risk being way higher than the reward, I 100% agree with. There's in my eyes, there's no doubt about it. Um, you buy these type of shoes because you like them because they're. So here's the other thing: is they're they're $200, right? So my favorite customizer is is probably Sneaker Surgeon, right? And those we're talking about three racks, right? Hot take. You're only what's up? Hot, hot take on your favorite sneaker customizer, but carry on. Yeah, he, as far as like as far as like the JBF does a lot of really good like uh, putting different textures on the shoe and stuff. I'm not talking about some dude that comes out here with the paintbrush, bro. Like there's a lot of really talented paintbrush artists and stuff like that, but. Um, I follow a few guys overseas and stuff that do like the full texture of overlays and stuff like that. And um, he sneaker surgeon is really good. But my whole point is that his are 3000. You're only going to spend 3000 because this is a shoe you want. You're not going to spend 3000 on a custom shoe and be like, Oh, I want to resell this. So because these are $200, you're able to buy these at a low price point and say, I can do that. But at the end of the day, it's still a custom shoe. And if you want to resell it, it, it's all about just finding that person that wants to buy it. And as you mentioned earlier, they do these specifically for you. So if they're not specifically your size, then you're specifically out of luck. Well, I mean, the pre-order is specifically for your size. Now right. you're not going to be the only person that wears that size, you know, hence the whole resale market for a pair of custom shoes, you know, it's like, yeah, you know, like Warren's, you know, 2000, 2000 were made and he's selling them for or was it 3000 made and they're 200 bucks a piece so you know you're hoping that there's a 3000 and one person you're hoping that that one person who missed up on their opportunity not only wants the shoe but also wears your size and is willing to buy them for double you know but once that person gets off of that warren train I mean, you're stuck with it, and you know that's 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 what it is. So I don't feel bad for you when you can't push that mug because you bought your size. <laughs> yeah, absolutely not. Yeah, you, you know, you made a critical decision, you made an executive decision, and now you got to ride with it. You know, that's that that's on you. So, um, other ones. I mean, my favorite customizer is Mosh. You know, and you know, Mosh is coming out with his own shoes. So. Shout out to Mosh for that. If you ever see this, I'm a big fan of yours. Um, but yeah, you know, my, my, Mosh is good at deconstructing shoes as well, you know, putting them back. But, you know, he makes one of ones. You know, if you're making a one of one, that means like I literally gave you the shoe to, you know, do that with. And I don't know. I expect to pay three racks just like with a sneaker surgeon. So, you know, like so. a tattoo. Like a tattoo. <laughs> yeah, you know, so yeah, so it's, it's that, that's going to be a centerpiece, you know what I'm saying? That's going to be something you put in a glass box and, you know, you may not even ever wear after one wear, so. Yeah, I agree. But, you know, when it comes to these custom kicks, uh, more power to, you know, the customizers. I'm all about free expression. That's great that, you know, you're able to reach into a niche market and you know implement your name and you know get it going across the vast majority of people um but you know it is what yeah. it is you know it's not it's not for resale you know these things are literally works of art by these particular people and they want you to have a piece of their art so you know respect it as such and uh you Shout know to Mosh, like you you mentioned you brought some sias out last week too Shout out to guys like him. Shout out to guys like Mosh who started and they've used other people's products. They've used Nikes and Reeboks to customize forever, right? So those guys have been using other people's shoes and now they've made enough out of that life to make their own shoe, bro. That's the dream of all the customizers. So shout out to those guys for really pursuing that. And uh, now they get to have their own shoe and that's so dope. <laughs> yeah, man. Uh, yeah, they you know, and it's fun watching their journey, you know, the, all along the way. So, you know, when we see these other, you know, custom kicks, you know, people are calling them Fugazi and stuff like that, you know, just keep pushing the envelope, keep keep making, you know, people want more of your stuff. Uh, you know, even with, uh, you know, the Deaf Dreams, Young Pony Boy, you know, he's, he's actually started off doing clothes first, you know, it, his line is doing exceptionally well here, you know, like, uh, I'm not sure if you've heard of him or not, but you know, he has like local artists and I think uh Trippy Red was actually wearing some of his 
his stuff the other day. So, you know, whenever, you know, your name gets across the board and, you know, mainstream artists are now looking in your direction and people are taking notice of your craft, you know, it, it I'm sure it gives that person the most motivation to keep going until, you know, their name is a household name or they do get that collab with Jordan or Nike or Reebok or Puma or whoever. So, you know, um, shout out to the creatives, man. That's, that's it. You know, one day we're going to be sitting. With keep pushing. That's all you can do. That's yeah. all you can do. Is we're going to see y'all at the top. Yeah, definitely. You know, y'all can come back and open this vault and be like, Oh yeah. Yeah. These guys, <laughs> <laughs> it started the whole thing during the Corona outbreak um, yeah speaking of which there there is a pair of uh corona sb dunks out there that went that were a custom pair that went for auction uh and the money was donated to a charity i can't remember off the top of my head but i do remember seeing those not my favorite pair of sbs but i'm happy whenever it goes for a charitable reason shout out to that guy i will try to plug you in whenever i figure it out do you have any favorite to close this thing out any favorite customs off the top of your head? Oh, man. I'll give you mine real quick. I'll let you think on it for a second. Sneaker Surgeon did these uh, – these tra- they weren't Travis's. They were Cactus Jack 4s. I think they were for Travis. I think this was like two or three years ago maybe. But they had actual like cactus. It looked like actual cactus on the entire upper. They were green. And it, it just I – don't, I don't know what kind of material he used to make them to be honest. But uh, it, it looked like full-on cactus on the entire shoe. And I just remember seeing those and being like, Oh my gosh, he really did that. So um, that's probably my, my top custom I've seen um, throughout the years. Um, man, you know what? Uh, I'm just going to shout them out. Uh, JW Dankliff, Dankfils, Dankfils out of San Antonio, Texas. Yeah, some of the, yeah. He does some of the prettiest soul swaps I've ever seen. Pretty soul swaps. Uh, man, I can't think of any off the top of my head, but I've been following that man for years. I was about to say, I feel like we saw him on like sneaker summits and stuff, bro. We've been following that guy for years. Yeah, Dank, Dank, Dank and Co. Like, that's his brand, and he does terrific work, amazing work, man. Uh, he, I think he has a pair of, like, Whataburger Customs uh, dunks that, that were fired from a couple years ago. Those were hard. Um, that's what I can think of off the top of my head right now. But, yeah, shout out to Dank, man. And lastly, do do we want to shout out our Houston, our Houston guy, Dane? Oh man, the boy Dane, he's on the come up, my boy Dane. I, I'm gonna plug him in right down here. If you've gotten this far in the episode, copy Thank this. You. If not, I will probably post him on our Instagram. He does terrific work. He's on the up and up right now. Uh, my boy Dane uh, is at hell, man. Heller, Heller Restorations. Heller Restorations. That's my boy, man. Shout out Dan one time. Yeah, he does. Uh, he's he's cleaning up a couple of my kicks. I'm still waiting for him back, but he does solid work. So, these are no plugs. We we believe in all these people. These are no plugs. <laughs> plugs, no plugs. No, yeah, no promo. Nobody paid me to shout them out. So, uh, shout out Dan for the sure. show. But uh, yeah, man. Uh, let's go ahead and wrap up episode 14, man. Yeah, welcome back, Trey. Uh, yeah, be back, dog. Happy to be back. Yeah, definitely. Um, yeah, this has been episode 14 of the Crease Podcast. We'd like to thank y'all so much for watching us. Uh, don't forget to like, subscribe, uh, all that fun jazz that y'all do online. Follow all of our Instagram, YouTube, Twitter, Facebook, uh, any of our social media platforms to get more updates about shoes and you know the likings of what we do. Um, you got anything for him, Trey? What you got? No, oh, man, I appreciate y'all sticking around again. And like Cita said, just keep following us. Uh, we're, as NBA season rolls in a little bit more, uh, by next week we're going to try to get into some more NBA stuff, some stuff people are showing out on their court. I know y'all are interested in seeing all the dudes in the bubble rocking their heat. So uh, we'll get into that a little bit more. But other than that, we appreciate y'all watching. This has been episode 14 of the Crease Podcast. Cita, until next time. Ain't no half stuff. You know what it is. We already know. Yes, sir. (laughs) All right, man. Peace. Peace. Yes, yes.